This is CBN News Watch. And thank you so much for joining us on this Thursday, September 16th, 2021. I'm Ephraim Graham. Ahead today, booster shot or not, will Americans need a third shot to be fully immunized against COVID-19? The FDA looking into that question right now. But a political firestorm around the chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff, General Mark Milley, over his phone calls to China as he faces multiple calls to resign. As the U.S. withdraws from the Middle East, what will that mean for Christians in the region? Hear from a Nobel Prize nominee. And amid gang violence and murder in Chicago, pastors unite to take on the crisis with the power of the gospel. All those stories and more are ahead in this edition of CBN Newswatch. We'd like to begin this half hour exploring the question, will Americans need to get a third dose of vaccine to be considered fully immunized? The Food and Drug Administration hears arguments Friday as Pfizer and Moderna release studies showing their vaccines lose potency over time. George Thomas has the details. Pfizer says its data shows that the effectiveness of its vaccine drops by 6% every two months after the second dose, not because of the Delta variant, but because of the vaccine's efficacy. It's one reason why medical experts say that so-called breakthrough cases are happening across the country among those fully vaccinated. What we've seen is increases in cases and breakthrough cases as time goes on. That's not directly related to Delta, but just because of a waning immunity. And this is why this booster question is coming into play right now. Pfizer now recommending that folks 16 years and older get a booster shot six months after getting the second dose. Big picture, um, boosting is important, boosting is necessary. The FDA meets on Friday to review Pfizer's clinical trials and other research to determine whether there's enough data to recommend that Americans need that extra shot in the arm at this time. There's no medical downside because the safety profiles of these vaccines are incredibly good. At the same time, we want to wait for the FDA and then CDC to, to really learn the best timing and dosage that they recommend. Meanwhile, Moderna releasing their own studies also showing breakthrough cases among those fully vaccinated a year ago versus those who recently got the jab. Moderna's president is also making the case for booster vaccines, though he says their inoculation appears to be strongest among the three vaccines against the Delta variant. It's not the kind of thing that you want to miss by six months. You'd rather be a little too early than a little too late because ultimately lives are at stake. Unlike Pfizer, Moderna is asking the FDA to allow its boosters to be a 50 microgram dose, half the dosage of the first two shots. A month after the Biden administration recommended that adults who got either Pfizer or Moderna start getting boosters this month, there's been a debate on whether there's sufficient data to warrant an extra shot. Health experts from around the world, including two FDA vaccine leaders, wrote in the Lancet Medical Journal this week that vaccine boosters are not necessary right now based on the current data and pushed back against White House plans to roll out booster shots for everyone. George Thomas, CBN News. Religious objections to vaccines were once used sparingly, but are now becoming much more widely invoked against getting the COVID vaccine, and that's likely to increase following President Joe Biden's vaccine mandates. The administration acknowledges more people will use the exemptions. Union officials expect there will be many requests for exemptions among federal employees. The calls have been growing for Chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff, General Mark Milley, to step down amid the political firestorm over reports in a new book co-authored by journalist Bob Woodward about his phone calls to China. Milley is standing firm and the president is standing with him. Caitlin Burke has this story. The outgoing president of the United States during this period of time uh, fomented unrest, leading to an insurrection and an attack on our nation's capital on January 6th. There's been widespread reporting and commentary from members of his own cabinet, the former president's cabinet, I should say, including high-ranking national security officials, questioning the former president's stability, his behavior, and his suitability to oversee the national security of the United States. This firestorm was all set off by excerpts from the soon-to-be-released book Peril by Bob Woodward and Robert Costa. The authors 
Reuters claim Milley reviewed intelligence that China was concerned by chaos in the United States, specifically surrounding the election and the January 6th Capitol attack. USA! According to the excerpt released Tuesday, Milley went behind the back of the commander in chief to reassure his Chinese military counterpart, quote, we are 100 percent steady, everything's fine, but democracy can be sloppy sometimes. Two separate phone calls between Milley and Beijing were reported. The general allegedly feeling the need to assure China, quote, if we're going to attack, I'm going to call you ahead of time. Woodward and Costa also claim they've received the transcript of a call between General Milley and Nancy Pelosi following the January 6th attack. Pelosi was reportedly concerned that Trump was both unstable and dangerous. Milley is then said to have held a meeting at the Pentagon, telling military leadership that they were not to act on any order from Trump to use nuclear weapons without his sign-off. No matter what you are told, you do the procedure, Milley told them. You do the process, and I'm part of that procedure. Milley then reportedly looked everyone in the eye and asked each one of them to say they agreed. You have a, the chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff, a military leader, basically ignoring the Constitution, deciding he's going to call a potential adversary and an enemy of the United States and collude with them and tell them, if I'm ever ordered to do something, I'm going to tell you about it first, and also break the chain of command when it comes to the nuclear codes of this country and its control. The general, meanwhile, is defending the actions he took. His spokesman addressing both the phone calls and the meeting with military leaders in a written statement, saying Milley acted within his authority in order to, quote, maintain strategic stability. The White House dismissed the concerns that we're hearing from Rubio and other Republican lawmakers. Press Secretary Jen Psaki saying, quote, the president isn't looking for guidance from members of Congress who stood by while the president of the United States and leader of their party fomented an insurrection. Caitlin Burke, CBN News. Members of the Trump administration dispute the idea the former president ever planned a nuclear attack against China. Turning now from politics to far above the Earth, another major step forward for tourism in space as SpaceX first private flight streaked into orbit Wednesday evening with two contest winners, a healthcare worker and a rich sponsor on board. The Dragon Capsule's two men and two women are looking to spend three days orbiting the Earth from an unusually high vantage point, 100 miles higher than the International Space Station. They'll then splash down off the coast of Florida this weekend. It is the first time a spacecraft circles the Earth with an all-amateur crew and no professional astronauts. It's just interesting to see the four different people they got from different walks of life that they put together to combine in this one mission instead of just people that have trained together for years and years and years through the military to become astronauts. This is amazing. The capsule is automated, but the space travelers did spend six months training for the flight and preparing to cope with any emergency. The Evangelical Lutheran Church in America has installed its first openly transgender bishop. The Reverend Megan Rohrer was installed in a service held in San Francisco's Grace Cathedral Saturday. Aurora will lead one of the church's 65 facilities overseeing nearly 200 congregations in Northern California and Northern Nevada. Aurora said in a statement, my installation will celebrate all that is possible when we trust God to shepherd us forward. She became one of seven LGBTQ pastors accepted by the Progressive Evangelical Lutheran Church in 2010 after it allowed ordination of pastors in same-sex relationships. Coming up, Christians in the Middle East as Iran and ISIS are on the move and the U.S. is reducing its presence in the region. A Nobel Prize nominee analyzes the dangers when we come back.
I'm Ephraim Graham, and this is Studio 5. Cruise with me as I discover the good things happening in the world of music, sports, television, and movies. The fact that Ryan Coogler was going to be directing the film, I knew that something special was going to happen. We'll chat with artists at the forefront of entertainment and explore the connection between popular culture and faith. I asked my pastor, I said, well, does that mean I'm supposed to be a preacher? He says, well, no, you already have a pulpit. Wednesday night at 8.30 on the CBN News Channel. How would you like to get a redo on your health, on your body, on your arteries, so you could have the energy you had 20 years ago? The great news is you can. I'm Dr. Mike Roizen, chair of the Wellness Institute at the Cleveland Clinic. I've written four New York Times bestsellers, but even better than having to read all that, you can listen to this DVD and watch it. Protect your heart? Yes, you can. Here's how. Go to CBN.com or call 1-800-700-7000 for your free copy of Protect Your Heart. Let the medical experts show you their new discoveries on how to avoid heart disease and even reverse it. Easy steps to uncover the hidden dangers in your medicine cabinet, reduce stress, and get a complete do-over for your health. Call 1-800-700-7000. That's 1-800-700-7000. Or go to CBN.com to claim your free copy of Protect Your Heart. Iran and ISIS are on the move in the Middle East. Both are ready to jump in and fill the void after U.S. combat troops withdrew from Iraq by the end of the year. On this week's episode of The Global Lane, Nobel Prize nominee Julian, Ju Ju Juliana Tamarazi says Christians and other Iraqis are in danger because ISIS is regenerating. I'm emboldened because of the fall of Afghanistan. A lot of people said that uh, ISIS was absolutely defeated in Iraq, but uh, starting 2019, ISIS activity started again. And within the last three months, they've been really aggressive in reorganizing, setting up checkpoints, attacking uh, people around Kirkuk area and other places uh, in Iraq. And these attacks, it is really Iran showing its infiltration, its might uh, against the American interests inside Iraq. Um, when I speak with my Iranian sources, they say Iranian government laughs when we say Iraq. They say Iraq is not uh, an independent country anymore. Iraq is really Iran 2.0. So um, this is what we had feared. Um, now, before it was ISIS mainly that we were afraid of. Today, we are afraid of the Iranian influence in Iraq. And also, there is uh, an army of uh, Shabak. Shabaks are... Um, a, uh, a minority group that has come about three, four hundred years ago to uh, Iraq, and they're backed by Iranians. They are wreaking havoc inside the Nineveh plain. So uh, before it was just ISIS we were afraid of, and Al Qaeda. Today it's the Iranian influence, the Shabak influence. Well, In let's talk about it. Let's talk a, a minute about ISIS because when he recently uh, met with French President Macron, uh, Kurdistan President Barzani said the Kurds need help to fight bash ISIS. So is ISIS regenerating? Yeah, I Absolutely. mean, you said they're, they're a big threat. Uh, I mean, how big of a threat are they? Uh, it is very serious because what happened was many uh, refugees from Syria flown, came into Iraq. They flew uh, or they walked through across the border. They came to Iraq uh, from Syria. Um, a lot of them, the unemployment is just devastating in Iraq. The economy has absolutely collapsed. The healthcare system is collapsed, so it is very easy to be able to infiltrate these camps that these Syrians and other Iraqis that uh, potentially um, were maybe pro Saddam Hussein in the past. They are Sunnis that are disgruntled and they feel marginalized. And they are, it's very easy to bribe these individuals to join their forces, the ISIS forces, because people are hungry, people are tired. Uh, COVID has really wreaked havoc on. Uh, Iraq on Iraqi population. So it's very easy to recruit uh, ISIS militants. We are really looking at an, a region or a country that is, has, is being controlled by other forces. And we really have to come to the aid of the Iraqi government and the Kurdish government to be able to um, keep Iraq together. And Juliana, you were recently nominated for the 2021 Nobel Peace Prize for all the work you've been doing throughout the uh, years with the organization that you founded, the Iraqi Christian Relief Council. And 
I wish you luck, but it's really hard work and God's blessings has gotten you to this point. So tell us a little bit about the mission of the organization. And I, I know you're continuing to help a lot of Iraqi Christians uh, throughout the region, not just in Iraq. Yes, uh, we founded Iraqi Christian Relief Council in 2007. Uh, there was a gap in the American media about the Iraqi Christians, the Assyrians, Chaldeans, and Syriacs. And we are really across, travel across the world, especially in the United States, with a mission to raise awareness, educate everyone about who the Iraqi Christians are. We ask for prayers and we raise funding. We're not in doubt. We really heavily rely on people's uh, goodness and financial sacrifices. And the money that we raise goes to Iraq for those who are left behind or who refuse to leave Iraq to help rebuild our lives. And uh, we also, as you mentioned, we help uh, refugees in Turkey, Lebanon, and Jordan who are living really in subhuman conditions. Uh, amidst their suffering, they have not, not lost faith in Lord Jesus Christ. And, and they're still suffering now, even uh, seven years after the uh, ISIS onslaught of the Christian villages like Karakosh, uh, also uh, Mosul and the battle there in 2017. They are still not gone and the people are still suffering. Okay, God's favor for the Nobel Peace Prize for you, but win or lose, Juliana, you're a winner to us. Thank you for all you do. Thank you for taking the time to share your thoughts with us today. Thank you so much. Please pray um, for me, for my ministry, as this uh, Nobel nomination is not, does not really belong to me. It belongs to those who have suffered tremendously for their faith, for those women and children that are suffering today in Afghanistan. Christians in Afghanistan are absolutely devastated. We're standing for with them, uh, Christians in Nigeria, Christians in Iraq and elsewhere, uh, and really for all of humanity. I pray that God, if he sees us deserving, uh, we will bring it home and we will be able to raise awareness uh, on the persecuted people and those who are suffering. Okay, Thank the, you. Su the suffering continues. God bless. Thank you, Juliana. Thank you so much. For an in-depth look at trends in the news, be sure to catch Global Lane this evening. It begins at 8.30 Eastern Standard Time on the CBN News Channel. You can also find it online or simply download the CBN News app. Still ahead here at home, gang violence and murder is a huge problem in the city of Chicago. We're going to hear how some Christian leaders are uniting to tackle the problem head on with spiritual weapons. We've got the story for you coming up right after this. Yeah, buddy. How many nickels are in a dollar? There are 20 nickels Look, in a dollar. How do birds fly? Does milk really make my bones stronger? Yeah, yeah. Daddy, when we die, will we go to heaven? Do you have the answer to life's biggest question? Call the 700 Club. We'll help you find answers to the important questions life brings your way. Watch breaking news, in-depth exclusive stories and programs from health to entertainment. You won't find anywhere else the CBN News Channel, a perspective you can trust. Enjoy credible news reporting from around the world. Discover inspiring programs and stories of hope, all in one place from a Christian perspective. The CBN News Channel, a perspective you can trust. To watch the CBN News Channel, download the app or visit CBNNewsChannel.com. Hello, I'm Dr. David Perlmutter, board-certified neurologist and number one New York Times best-selling author. Wouldn't it be great to boost your energy, eliminate brain fog, and even reverse brain disease? Well, you can, and I'm gonna show you how, along with some of the world's most well-respected brain experts in this DVD, Protect Your Brain. Get Protect Your Brain, a free DVD, only from the Christian Broadcasting Network. Featuring experts on the cutting edge of neuroscience and brain health. No matter how many times you've failed in the past, you really can do this. In Protect Your Brain, you'll discover simple strategies to keep your brain young and healthy. Improve your memory. Discover the gut-brain connection. In Protect Your Brain, get your free copy at CBN.com or call 1-800-700-7000. If you want to improve the quality of your life, get the DVD, protect your brain, and get it today. Crime statistics paint Chicago as a war zone where gang members outnumber police 10 to 1. 
Over the Labor Day weekend, 65 people were shot, six of them killed, including a four-year-old boy who lost his life to a stray bullet. The pain has some Christian leaders uniting to fight the war with the power of the gospel. Our Charlene Aaron has the story. According to the Defense Department, between 2001 and 2020, more people were killed in Chicago than in the combined conflicts in Afghanistan and Iraq. Spiritual leaders in the city are joining together, hoping to change that narrative. And their weapon is the power of the gospel. Chicago is back in the national news. With 74 people shot and 12 fatalities, this is now one of the bloodiest weekends on record. Pastor Dimas Salaberrios, a former drug dealer from New York, knows firsthand the reality of gun violence. While fasting 40 days for an end to the violence, he felt compelled to take America where it happens in his film, Chicago, America's Hidden War. We were killed in front of my face. And what am I supposed to do? Go hide in the closet? I don't think so. Salaberrios spent two years filming in the city and tells CBN News he sees what's happening there as a spiritual battle. I would say in Chicago, there is definitely a demonic presence that, um, that, that I sense when I'm praying and inter interacting with people on the street. Pastor Corey Brooks, who heads a ministry there called Project Hood, agrees. There's a real spiritual battle going on in the city of Chicago for uh, the lives of people. Uh, there seems to be a spirit of murder throughout the city. Brooks explains uh, how evil works its way into the lives of young people. Some of it is gang related. You have a bunch of splinter groups who are part of organizations and these splinter groups go from block to block and neighborhood to neighborhood and it makes things very difficult. I'm thinking to myself, I could be the next one to get shot, dead, anywhere, right here, gone, and angled forever. Children are among the many victims. We're halfway through the year and over a hundred children have been shot already. We have a child in our, our film, uh, Quincy, you know, who stop. sleeps under the his his bed because he feels like, like you know, he can get face. shot. He realized from the bullet holes no, on the walls really of his house, idea. from many yeah. drive-bys in the neighborhood, yeah, that where his, the level of his bed, if he slept in his bed, he would be shot. That paralysis of fear is spreading. We have a lot of parents who are leery about uh, just allowing the children to go out and play. In our neighborhood alone, we had a McDonald's of all things to close because of the violence. I've done so many funerals, unfortunately, you know, too many to even count. Father God, I just pray in the name of Jesus that you would bring peace to this city, God. Salaberrios' documentary, which became eligible for an Academy Award, showcases how the church is combating the darkness through prayer and evangelism. They're having marches. They're going door to door. They're doing things that they have not normally done. Through his ministry, Brooks reaches out directly to gang members. We have a violence prevention team of, of 10 full-time employees um, that go out into the neighborhood to help to make sure that there's no retaliation uh, for violence, to make sure that we uh, have conflict resolution with individuals who are participating in that type of lifestyle. Pastor Salaberrios says a similar effort saved him from a life of crime and violence. There were Christian. Three women reached out to me when I was a street god and one of the largest drug dealers. Three women reached out to me and said, can we pray for you? I didn't know what that was. When they laid hands on me, the power of God knocked me to the floor. Demons come manifesting out of me. They started praying in the name of Jesus. I felt a peace come over me like never before. And, and, and I, I quit selling crack cocaine. Brooks believes that same power and peace can now make a difference in his city. At the end of the day, uh, we can try to supply jobs. We can try to supply counseling. We can try to give uh, all kinds of different resources. But I really do believe, ultimately, it, it's a spiritual warfare and a battle that we're in. And it's the battle for people's soul. It's the enemy is out to kill, steal, and destroy uh, people in our community. And we have to do everything we can to push back the darkness, to push back the evil. And the way that we do that is showing the love of Christ in very practical, meaningful ways. And the word is getting out with help from Hollywood of all places. Recently, Academy Award-winning actor Denzel Washington 
Mark Burnett, Roma Downey, and other celebrities rented out movie theaters to help spread the message of the film. Charlene Aaron, CBN News. And coming up, making the Bible available to more people in different languages around the world. We're going to have that story for you when we come back. Please stay with us. Life is better with a good night's sleep. Get your free DVD or booklet of Protect Your Sleep as the world watches from the outside. It's a big diplomatic tug of war here in the Middle East. Go inside the story with Jerusalem Dateline. Israeli archaeologists are talking about a discovery that could change the thinking about the Temple Mount. Join CBN Jerusalem Bureau Chief Chris Mitchell and get the biblical perspective on the events shaping the world. It's what starts in Israel then ends up going to other places. Watch Jerusalem Dateline Friday night at 8.30 on the CBN News Channel. Life. It's meant to be lived fully. Jesus said it. I came to give you life. Life to the fullest. Life in your family. Life in your finances. Life in your body, mind, and spirit. Life in your every day. At CBN.com, we're taking what Jesus said seriously. We're here to help you discover life. Life. Live it fully. CBN.com. The mobile Bible platform YouVersion plans to make the entire Bible available in every language and to 95% of the world by the year 2033. YouVersion is teaming up with the Bible translation organization Illuminations and has set a goal of the New Testament translated for 99.9% .9 of the world's population by that same date. Illumination says more than 3,700 languages still need a Bible translation. You can learn more about the efforts to translate the Bible into new languages at cbnnews.com. Before we go, it's time for your Thursday Thankful. I hope you'll join me in this prayer of gratitude. Father, thank you for your persistent patience with me. Your passionate pursuit of my heart and my time is overwhelming. Your love is like no other. Thank you and amen. Well, that is a wrap for this edition of CBN News. Watch and remind you, you can always find more of our programs on the CBN News channel at any time. You can also find them online at cbnnews.com and of course on the CBN News app. We'd love to know what you think about the stories you've seen here today. You can email us. That address is newswatch at cbn.com. You can also reach out and touch us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Make it a thankful Thursday. We'll see you right back here tomorrow.